Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about funny things in panoramic x-rays and how does this affect your orthodontic treatment plan, be it braces or functional appliance or aligners. So let's talk about that. So in order to talk about that, you need to, first of all, you need to know your Dental Practice Act in your own state or country, what the laws are. Every state has different laws. It's always changing. I don't know your laws. I know my laws. Um, and I always have to review my laws for my state. So in any case, what I might say maybe doesn't apply to you or maybe isn't correct. So this is just based on my knowledge from the states I've worked in. But in any case, for the most part, in most states that I know, if you take an x-ray or if you take a CBCT diagnostic x-ray, you are responsible for whatever shows up on that to have it read. Either you read it yourself or you have someone professionally read it. And there are a lot, now that a lot of you have CBCTs, there's a lot of e-companies out there that looks like it's running about 100-ish, depending on your volume. Um, a lot less if you are doing a lot of volume per month um, and more if you infrequently do it, to have a scan read, a CBCT scan read. They can do 2D, like read a pano, or they can do 3D, read a CBCT, which obviously takes a little bit longer because there's a lot more layers, but it's a lot more diagnostic. So, um, but I think it's something to consider if you're if you're taking frequent X-rays and if you're doing ortho to have these reports done. Um, you'd be surprised the stuff I learned from these reports. And you should specifically ask the questions: Is it okay for me to start this patient on orthodontic treatment? Is it okay for me to move tooth number whatever or the teeth around it? You know. Um, you want them to answer that question in writing and sign with their name and license number because if they say they think it's benign, if they think it's okay, they will say so or they'll not say so and then they will sign and if and when it wasn't okay, well, you're pretty much in the clear because you had someone that is a specialist read it and tell you it's okay. So it's not unlike what we did 20 years ago where we'd send patients, every patient like this to OS, right? But I mean, that's a lot more expensive than now that you have the technology in your office, you can just upload it and get the answer usually within a day or so. So I'd, I'd strongly recommend that. Um, obviously, a lot of it is going to depend on what you're trying to do, you know? Um, so before I even do that, I mean, you got, I've got a few examples here, just on a few panels that I got and what makes me more nervous and what doesn't. Obviously, this is a problem. Um, I mean, put your GP hat on. I mean, there's an odontoma or a supernumerary tooth. There's some type of goodness knows ground glass lumpy stuff in there. There's roots being displaced. This is a, definitely a problem. This, <laughs> this, I don't even have to, I mean, I can send it to them, but this is going to go straight to OS. That's a no-go, okay? If you've worked with me before, you'll see me say no-go sometimes. Uh, I'm not a dental radiologist. I love dental radiology and pathology. It's just a hobby of mine. I love to learn it. I would love, if I had the time and the money, I would love to become to go to school and become bi bi specialized, double specialized. Um, they have a program at USC that's for the most part can be done online, um, but you do have to go out there periodically. But it's I think it's it's a lot of hours. I don't have time for that right now. Um, but I might do it someday, and it's expensive. But you know who knows? Maybe I'll do it down the road. Be I think a good way to retire. Um, and I think I think it's really growing. Being able to sit there and read radiology X-rays is is cool from the comfort of your house. But anyways, something like this. Doesn't bother me too much, you know. I mean, eh? if I had historical X-rays, maybe a panel from a year before, and I don't see it getting bigger, I don't see roots displacing. Maybe I'd take a CBCT and have someone read it just to be safe. But you also got to keep in mind, anytime you have condensing osteitis, I mean, this clearly is a supernumerary or an odontoma, and then you have just, you know, more opacities versus the rest of the of the bone. Um, the tooth might not move as predictably. So these are just things I'd want to know because I'd want to let the patient know. I don't, I, it's highly unlikely that you couldn't take this case, but if you wanted to do all kind of movement on this tooth, or let's say you want to translate it, you know, it may not move predictably or at all when you know, so if that is the chief complaint, that's an issue. You also have to keep in mind what kind of movements are you doing. So before you even, of course, I mean, like I said, something like this, go to OS, get that taken care of. Um, but you know, things like this, or this is a little bit more weird to me. I mean, I'd have to get a CBCT, but it almost looks like a something. And it's got areas of, of lucency and opacity and defined some defined margins and some not defined margins. So this bothers me more in the middle. Um, but definitely I would send this one to get a CBCT and get it read before I even took this case. And this tooth may or may not be displacing. Um, but you gotta think about 
what movements am I doing here? You know, am I just aligning the tooth? Am I translating the tooth? Am I rotating the tooth? Am I distalizing the tooth? Um, is it is it expanding buccally? Is it expanding lingually? Am I proclining the tooth? Like, there's all different types of movements. So if you don't know how what your plan is, and that's a nice thing about a ClinCheck, or you know, you can also do it in any aligner company, but ClinCheck is pretty accurate, is that they'll have the tooth movement table, and you can work up your ideal, you know, first, and then you can say, okay, well, you know, whatever tooth this is, I think this is, I've got it cut off. Let's say it's number 28 or lower right five or whatever. Um, okay, well, it looks like I don't really need any movement on that tooth in order to get my chief complaint, so this is probably not an issue for me. You know, maybe I won't. You know, maybe I'll bring it up to the patient, say, hey, I see something, you know, we can send you, we can have this read, it, I'm, I'm just gonna charge you, you know, the fee that they charge me, you know, so at least it's peace of mind. Or we could not, we can start the treatment, we can lock this truth with the aligner treatment plan, not move it, and we can monitor it. You know, may not be as perfect of a treatment plan, but you have two options here. Which one do you prefer? You write that out that you had this conversation. Patient chooses. They can pay the extra 100, 150 or not. Or we can lock it and have a less than ideal outcome. You know, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's 80, 90 percent. But at least they got a choice, right? Something like this. No, I'm not, I'm not even starting that case. No way. And this definitely, <laughs> definitely not. So, I mean, there's just a few examples. But I want to let you know that a lot of you, sometimes when I see stuff, you guys push back. Oh, it's fine. I'm like, I don't know that it's fine. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, or what if it's a supernumerary tooth and you're saying, oh, can I treat it? Well, well, again, I mean, unless you took that slice and you know that that movement isn't going to be in that direction. At this point, it's not possible for you to, even though you could upload a CBCT into Invisalign, new feature, and it's actually really, really cool. Um, they can't work around stuff like this, you know, or stuff like this. That, that's not gonna show up. It's not like they can be like, yes, we'll move this tooth, but not in the direction of that. No, they, they don't, that doesn't show up yet. They're not that cool, okay? So I cannot promise it's not gonna collide with something, or I cannot promise it's, it's, it's not gonna get stuck, or I can't promise it's not gonna cause root resorption. So that's why you wanna make sure you do your due diligence, because if you misstep on one of these, and again, this is not my job, I'm not a dental radiologist, okay? I, I might see stuff and it's nice to have another set of eyes, but it's you guys' job to diagnose, I don't diagnose. I just point out, hey, see something funny in the x-ray, might wanna get it looked at. And, and regardless, you guys are the first set of eyes, that's your patient, your diagnosis, your license. So make sure you're not letting patients push you forward when you see something in a pano. I know you want to get that start. I know you want to get going, but it's your license if something happens to that to that tooth. And all it takes is one, one. And and I mean, I see panos all day long. I mean, dozens sometimes, if not more. And it's pretty frequently. And my eyes are very well trained to pick stuff up. And that's just a 2D pano, you know? So make sure you're, you're doing your all your ortho cases with panos. Don't do them with FMX. I mean, I know that I'll say it's okay, but that's, again, your license because there could be something that you, that's cut off that you don't see. You know, and maybe we're moving the tooth in that direction. So sorry if this sounds like a lecture, but I feel like three times alone today this came up and the doctors are like, well, it's all right. You know, I'm like, really, is it? Because I wouldn't want to get in trouble for that. And I, if I were a patient, I would want to know that you were doing your due diligence and really thinking about my best interest. Hey, let me know about it. Give me options, you know. And even if the patient says, it's okay, I'll sign off for this or I'll sign off for that, remember, you know better than that, so don't do it. Just don't take the case. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you. And, and if you have any questions, you can always contact your liability insurance company. They would, by all means, tell you to get it read, okay? All right, thanks.